Popsicle versus egg shape. What are the main differences between the two and why have egg boards become so damn popular lately? So the actual shape of the egg boards has a wider center here and then it tapers out and gets smaller towards the kicks, which creates all different types of benefits straight off the bat. Having a wider center creates more surface for you to stand on, which makes you feel more in control and more stable on your board. The tapered kicks have a lot of benefits that I'll get into later, but egg boards usually come in a similar length and wheelbase to standard popsicle boards. That along with the tapered kicks makes it feel like the board isn't actually that big and it still performs just as good as a popsicle board. So they're not just massive clunky boards that you can't control properly. Most egg boards come in a symmetrical shape too, so you can just chuck it down and skate, not have to worry about which way is the front and the back. You can get symmetrical boards in popsicle boards too, but it's just way more common with egg boards. And something unique to the heroin egg boards, they have the razor edge construction on the top ply, which is sharper, it doesn't have the rolled edge. So when you're doing flip tricks, it catches your foot better. So there's more friction and it helps you do flip tricks better. I've been riding nothing but egg boards for at least the last four months now, and I love them. It also takes a bit of stress off of skateboarding when you look down and you see such a cool shape under your feet, it just makes your brain think that you're just cruising around having fun. So skateboarding doesn't become so stressful and serious when you're riding an egg board. So I actually got this board sent to me by the legends over at Joker Skateboard Company. It's a nine inch symmetrical board. It's 33 inches long and has a wheelbase of 14 inches. I'm actually pretty keen to skate this today since it's been so long since I've stepped on a popsicle board. Plus I've never ridden a symmetrical popsicle board too. So that's exciting for me as well. So I'm gonna get a little session in on this board, see how different it feels after skating nothing but egg boards for four months. And then I'll get into the positives that come with the tapered kick on an egg board and why you diehard popsicle skaters might benefit from riding an egg board. This board actually feels sick. I love that it's symmetrical and the concave on it feels really nice. So shout out to the guys at Joker for sending me this board. I'll put a link to their website in the description below. So this is nine inches wide and this is 9.4, but in a way this board felt bigger just then. Because the kicks on these taper down, it feels like it's a skinnier board when you're on the nose and the tail of it. This board is full all the way up through both kicks. So as I was skating, it actually felt like a bit of a bigger board. Having a full nose felt really weird on the crooked ground I just did and the Nolly nose manual. I'm obviously used to it being tapered and having a lighter nose. So it's completely different feeling with a full Nose. And that's where the benefits come in on an egg board. So what I've found with an egg board, because of the tapered kicks, this allows you to get into slappy grind so much easier. The nose is pointy, so as you're getting up into a slappy, there isn't much nose in the way. So getting into your slappy grinds is so much easier on a pointed egg board. Another benefit that I've found with the tapered kicks is because they are pointier, when you're doing scooping tricks like tray flips, 360 shovets, big spins, and all those kind of movements, these boards whip a lot faster. Because the tail is more pointy, it hits the point of the ground faster. On a full kick skateboard, it takes a lot longer for you to get the corner of the pocket to hit the ground. So these scoop a lot faster. So tray flips and three shoves and all that have become a lot easier on a big board like this because of that. And the other thing I found when I rode the Frankie Villani board, I was trying to do nolly crooked grinds and I had such a hard time. This was because I was popping off a different point of the nose because once again, this is tapered. It was lighter and I didn't have the right point that I was popping from. So it took a little while to get used to, but once you find the sweet spot on it, it makes nolly crooks so much easier. Not just that trick, but just nollies in general feel a lot lighter off an egg board. So they are the three main benefits I've found with the tapered kicks of an egg board, especially having the wider surface in the middle. It just makes you more stable and makes everything so much more fun to skate. So I can't get enough of these egg boards. But I'm having fun riding this nine inch popsicle board right now. So I'm gonna get into some of those tricks that benefit on an egg board just to physically feel a side-by-side -side comparison of the differences. So I'm gonna try and do some fluffy crooked grinds. I'm gonna try all those tray flips and big spin movements. And then I'm gonna try some nolly crooks just to see the complete difference between a full nose and then the kicks on a tapered egg board. So I'll get into that now, then go over the main differences and which tricks feel better on which board.
when I was just trying nollie grinds, I couldn't figure out where to put my foot on the nose here because I'd go to pop a nollie and it would just like hit the ground and not come back up. So after a bit of playing around, I went from the tip of the nose and put my foot lower into the pocket here and that allowed me to get a faster snap. Having it there, I could pop and the nose would hit faster. Just having my foot in that position rather than higher at the top here. But when it comes to the nollie flip and the nollie heel, I had so much trouble popping those tricks. They're not really hard tricks for me. I can do them pretty consistently, but I could just not figure out where to put my front foot to pop the board properly. My nollie heels have been working real good on egg boards. I've been doing them really nicely. And today I struggled so hard to get a nollie heel flip over the hip there. I tried the same thing. I tried to put my foot closer in the pocket. I tried to go on the tip here. I tried it further over this side. I just couldn't figure it out. The one I landed, I honestly don't even know what I did different. I was just trying it for so long. It's definitely because I've been riding egg boards for four months and I've got used to the slimmer tapered nose and it's a lighter pop too. And then when I got to the tray flip, I had so much trouble. I don't know why. Tray flips are one of my most easy tricks that I can do. It's my most consistent flip trick. I can do tray flips better than I can do kick flips. And I had the same problem because of the big fat tail I was scooping off. I couldn't get into the pocket properly and I just didn't know how to figure out how to scoop this thing properly. So that took way longer than it should have. I got a decent tray flip at the end, but it just took so long. It was like 20 minutes just to land a trick that I usually get first try. So that just proved my point that I can nolly better on an egg board now and my scooping tricks are way better on an egg board. The tapered kicks benefit those tricks so much. And now getting back onto a popsicle board, the kicks are just more full. So I had so much trouble doing those tricks today. When it comes to the slappy crooked grinds, I was still able to do them, but sometimes I missed and my board would just hit the ledge. That's never happened on an egg board. Usually I can get straight up into the crooks without trying that hard. It doesn't have a big wide nose like this popsicle board. So I can get straight up into the slappy crook without bashing into the wall so hard because the nose is tapered. So they're the benefits I've found of riding egg boards. And it was proven so true today when I went back to a popsicle board. Struggled with my nollies, struggled with my scooping tricks, struggled a little bit with slappy crooks as well because the nose would just bash into the ledge rather than riding up to it smoothly. So you can do all of these tricks on a popsicle board, but those tricks are just made a lot easier on an egg board. So they're the main differences between a popsicle board and an egg board. I hope this video was insightful for you guys so you can figure out which one would be better suited to your skating, but you can do all types of skating on either a popsicle or an egg. There's just certain shapes of boards that help with certain styles of skateboarding. And for me personally, egg boards are perfect for my style of skating and I love them. So if you enjoyed this video, check out the first egg board video I did right here. It's the first heroin egg I rode. That was a 9.25 and that pretty much started me on the path of getting into these egg boards and I don't think I'm going to go back to popsicle boards. But once again, shout out to the guys at Joker for sending me this board. I appreciate it heaps. I had a lot of fun riding this board and it was a good challenge for me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.